guys, Mr. Klein here with our second and last lesson of our chapter on motion. We'll be talking about acceleration today. And just like the last lesson, whenever we were working on a speed, we did some math, we'll be doing the same thing today and I'll be giving some examples. So, you are a fighter pilot. You're sitting on an aircraft carrier, 70,000 tons of naval awesomeness. You're in an airplane. You're sitting there. You're waiting to take off. But... An airplane taking off of a small aircraft carrier in relation to a long runway is pretty difficult. So you need to be launched off of a catapult. So you're sitting there. Next thing you know, you're being thrown forward and off the carrier and into the air and away you go. What's going on right here? You were at rest and now you're in the air flying a couple hundred knots or nautical miles or kilometers per hour since we're scientists and we use metric. Okay. What's going on here is acceleration. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to be talking about acceleration. Now, like the other concepts of motion and speed you learned about already in this chapter, acceleration is pretty familiar to you. But we're going to define it scientifically. Acceleration is any change in the motion of an object. Any change in the motion. Now, because the acceleration concerns velocity, remember velocity is speed and direction, any change in speed or any change in direction is considered acceleration. So if you have a science teacher who gives you true or false, you're walking north and at a constant speed and then you turn west, is that acceleration? The answer is true because you've changed direction. Any change in that vector quantity okay, of speed or direction is considered acceleration. Okay, Most of the time we think of acceleration as speeding up, but it's actually any change. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's define this in our graphic organizer. Any change in the motion, speed or direction of an object is acceleration. So we're defining acceleration here. So let's go into our next thing and let's talk about what are the types of acceleration. People commonly think that acceleration only happens when an object speeds up. Like we just established, that isn't the case. You can speed up, you can slow down, you can change direction. Okay, there are three general categories of acceleration. The first one is what we call positive acceleration. That's when an object increases its speed. As was stated above, this is what most people think when they think about acceleration. Speeds up, it's accelerating. That's correct. The opposite is also acceleration or negative acceleration or what we call deceleration. It's when an object slows down. After all, we're a car driving down the road and whenever you hit your brakes, that's acceleration. You know, hey, whoa, hang on, whoo, hey, uh, that's some that's some deceleration going on right there. Okay, so let's go through this once again. Okay, the car is driving; they're coming toward each other. They both hit on the brakes, and they both slow down to a stop because they're slowing down. They're changing their velocity, or even in this case, when the car is turning, that is acceleration or negative acceleration, deceleration. So. Any change, like I said already, any change in velocity is also acceleration. An object moving at a constant speed that turns is considered to be acceleration as it changes its direction. In the video you saw just now, when the car turns the corner, that's deceleration. I'm sorry, that's a change in direction, therefore it is acceleration. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add to our graphic organizer the three main types of acceleration. Speed up, positive acceleration. Slow down, negative acceleration or deceleration, or a change in direction. Okay, those are all types of acceleration. So let's go ahead and let's determine, do some math. Let's determine the acceleration of an object. Because determining acceleration with speed and direction are changing both at the same time, it can be difficult. Whenever our purpose is in middle school's physical science, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on changes in speed and doing this math. Okay, so. The formula for determining the acceleration of an object is as follows, okay? Acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial or first velocity divided by time, okay? Or A equals V2 minus V1 over T, okay? That sounds really complicated, but it's only adding one extra step above determining speed, okay? So the reason why, you might be saying, Mr. Klein, why is it at V2 and V1? What are those? Like, I thought exponents are numbers up at the top. Well, they're actually what we call subscripts, okay, numbers lower down. And that's to show you what order the velocities are measured. So the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time, that's how we determine acceleration. So let's go ahead and let's do some math. So a car accelerates from a complete stop to 6 meters per second in 2 seconds. 
what is the car's acceleration? Okay, so let's solve this. Well, first off, we write out the formula. Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. What we then do is we substitute. Okay, acceleration, final velocity was 6 meters per second. The initial velocity was a complete stop, which means if you're not moving, it's 0 meters per second. And the time that it took place was 2 seconds. Okay, so we have 6 meters per second minus 0 meters per second divided by 2 seconds. Then what we do is we simplify. Okay, 6 minus 0 is 6. So 6 meters per second divided by 2 seconds. We divide, and that gives us an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. Okay, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared, or distance divided by time squared. Okay, now for our purposes in middle school, we will always use the same units. Okay, we don't have to convert, you know, kilometers to meters and stuff like that. We're just using the same things. Okay, that way you don't get confused about it. Now, if you remember, when we talked about acceleration, it could also mean negative acceleration or deceleration. Okay. So let's look at an example of a car slowing down or an object slowing down. So a car slows down from 12 meters per second to a complete stop in three seconds. What is the car's acceleration? Okay, so we do the same thing. We put in the formula. Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. We substitute. Okay, the final velocity was a complete stop, so that's zero meters per second. The initial velocity was 12 meters per second, so we, and the time was three seconds, so we plugged that in. 0 meters per second minus 12 meters per second divided by 3 seconds. We simplify. Okay, 0 minus 12 is negative 12 divided by 3. We take negative 12 divided by 3, and that gives us an acceleration of negative 4 meters per second squared. If you ever have an acceleration with a negative sign, that always tells you it's slowing down. So if your teacher might be giving you a true-false question saying, an object is accelerating negative 4 meters per second squared, what is it doing? You look at the negative side and say, oh, teacher, it's slowing down. And your teacher will give you a big thumbs up and saying, thanks for being very, very observant. And noticing the negative sign always means slowing down. So there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add our formulas into our graphic organizer. Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time, or A equals V2 minus V1 over T. So that's kind of the basics of acceleration. There's one more thing I wanted to talk about uh, is determining acceleration on the graph. Okay, it requires a distance versus time graph, or actually, it also can require a distance uh, versus velocity graph. It's seeing when an object is accelerating is easy. You have to look at the slope of the line to see if the object is accelerating. Okay, if the line is straight, that means the velocity is constant. Therefore, there's no change, so there is no acceleration. And if you want to compare slopes, the slope that has a steeper angle is the one with higher acceleration. What we're going to do here is we're going to look at a velocity over time graph, which distance versus time is broadly similar. If you remember from the last lesson, when you have a distance versus time graph, acceleration is curved due to the nature of speeding up. But a velocity over time, let's look at this. As you can see, the slope at first is slow, okay? It's accelerating slowly because the slope's rather low. It gets steeper, so it accelerates quickly. It bottoms out, or rather goes straight. That means it's going at a steady speed, so there's no acceleration going on. It slows down, and as you can see, the line goes almost vertical. That's a rapid deceleration. It's hitting its brakes, slowing down. And when it's flat, it's at stopped, okay, on the zero line, okay, of velocity. And, of course, once it goes below into the negative y-axis, that's actually returning in the opposite direction. But for our purposes in our class, we're not going to discuss that for there. Okay, that's just a little bit on top of it. Okay, so let's make sure we add this in, acceleration on our graph. Sloping upward is positive acceleration. Sloping downward is negative deceleration. Okay, and then the steeper it is, it's the faster it's speeding up or slowing down. And if the line is flat, there's no acceleration at all. It's going at a constant speed. You might be asking yourself, Mr. Khan, why is acceleration important? Well, acceleration is an important concept to understand because speed only tells you part of an object's motion. Okay? Same thing goes for velocity. When determining average speed, you know, it tells you does doesn't tell you whether it was constant or not. Okay, it doesn't tell you whether you were slowing down or anything like that. And instantaneous speed is only a measure of the speed at the single moment and doesn't tell you what the object was doing before or after that moment. So there you go. That's your lesson, okay? Remember, acceleration is any change in speed or uh, velocity or speed or distance, okay? Any change, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, all those are considered acceleration. 
Positive acceleration is speeding up. Negative, deceler negative acceleration or deceleration is slowing down. And a change in direction is that. Remember the formula is A equals the, or acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. Or A equals V2 minus V1 over T. We can look at it on a graph. And the steeper the slope is, the faster it's accelerating. And of course, acceleration is important because it tells you whether the object is speeding up or slowing down, not just what speed it's going over a particular amount of time. So there you go. That's your lesson, and that's your chapter on motion and speed and acceleration. Really simple concepts we kind of understand, but also they get really complicated as things change over time. So there you go. That's your lesson. And if, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Anything.